Here is an introduction to financial statements for schools, specifically those schools that report to governmental agencies. Most often think of them as public schools or state schools, and they report to the local governmental agency. Many years ago, governments reported their financial activities as part of funds, and traditionally state and local government financial reporting contained financial statements arranged around those funds, the government funds, proprietary funds, fiduciary funds, etc. They were The funds were widely used, but they ended up making things actually more complicated, and people ended up being very confused. So about 10 years ago, they started to combine and come into more financial statements as we know them now. And that is what we're going to discuss right here. For the government, it's really called the Statement of Net Assets, but it's got the same information as a balance sheet. It actually assesses the balance of a government's assets. The resources it can use to provide services, which we call assets, and the things that it owes, the obligations, it has to turn over resources to other organizations, which we call liabilities. The difference between a government's assets and its liabilities is called net assets. And the name of the statement really reflects its emphasis on what a government would have left over after satisfying its liabilities. But an awful lot of individuals, especially those on school boards, don't think about them as um, resources and liabilities as such. They think of them as balance sheet terms, and that's why I'm using that term here. And net assets in and of themselves, we'd have them as stockholders' equity for a corporation, but they're an indicator of government's financial position. It's standing at any point in time. So we're going to start with assets. Assets are presented in order of the relative liquidity, how quickly they get turned into cash. This is something that exists for corporations as well as for schools. So in other words, the statement starts off with cash and assets that are most easily converted to cash or consumed, such as receivables. And then it leads to those expected to be used for many years, such as buildings and other capital assets. The example I have here doesn't have um, long-term assets, and that's simply because in this case, the school does not own it, the sample school that is being given. But most of the other things are the same as what we've talked about in the chapter. Cash and cash equivalents is exactly the same. Property taxes receivable, a company might call it accounts receivable. It's the money coming in. From a school point of view, we know that it's property taxes that are coming in. There's an allowance for uncollectibles. We have that in a corporation as well. Due from other governments would just be other receivables. Accrued interest is interest we have yet to receive, but we have earned on our investments, etc. So we end up with the same kind of things, including inventory. There's not really much difference in the asset area. The same thing with liabilities. A company might call them all accounts payable or accrued expenditures. And just remember that accrued expenditures is actually expenses that we've accrued but not yet paid, but we owe them. So therefore, it is a liability, even though it's got the word expense in there. Here, this example I'm showing you just simply has very specific names as to where the money goes due to other funds. We've got accounts payable and accrued liabilities, yes, but we've got other government agencies due to student groups. This is how they're allocated out according to their budget. And then we end up with fund balances, the amount that's left over this residual we're talking about, and we have certain reservations in money we can't spend it. The other thing of interest here is because certain things are restricted and they're allocated accordingly, we can only use that second column for the debt. So the general fund on the far left is similar to what you would find in a corporation. The next one over would just be restricted. And it's restricted to paying off that debt. In a corporation, we would have that as well, and it would be on the balance sheet. We would just call it restricted, restricted assets, restricted liabilities, etc., then you, you end up with another category, and the, the column on the far right is a total. So the items here are very, very similar to what we've been discussing in, in class. Now, for governmental agencies, it's called the Statement of Activities, and it's identical to the Statement 
uh, the income statement. The only thing I'm showing you here is there's just different names for some of the revenues. A company might have sales or service. You know, they're going to sell their inventory or they're going to provide services such as I do taxes and I do some writing on the side. So my revenue would be service revenue. Here, a school knows that their money comes from property taxes, so that's the revenue. Or the money comes from straight aid, state aid, so that's a, the name of the revenue account. There's unrestricted investment earnings. Say there's uh, interest on uh, some bond or on some bank accounts that, because it's unrestricted, can be there. We could also have restricted revenue by all, the same way. The other account, that's because we could be selling something. So for example, if the school has an investment and sells it and there's a gain or loss, the sale would be the revenue amount. In terms of expenses, a company, if they're selling their goods, they've got a cost of goods sold, which is the inventory item, but their biggest expense is also salaries or services. Um, it could be salaries or advertising and depreciation and interest expense on loans. We've got the same kind of things here. Matter of fact, they're almost identical. Schools will call them instruction or instruction-related activities. We'd have payroll or cost of goods sold. Um, instructional or school leadership. You'd have management salaries. There'd be student-based support services. You're just kind of categorizing them slightly different, but that's because in the school realm, there are so many things that are alike that you can end up categorizing them the same to compare school to school. But they're pretty much the same thing. Community services, you want to break that out so you can show the community the activities you're doing. But interest expense and depreciation expense are the exact same thing you would have on the income statement. So the terms are the same. It's going to look a little different, um, and I'll show you why on the next slide. And here's the difference. When you're talking about having school items where money comes from taxes, the school doesn't get to say how much taxes revenue they've got coming, or they don't really have the main control over that. That's part of the board and the, the um, taxes that are set for real estate taxes. But here's the idea. That amount comes at the bottom because we still have to account for it. You're spending taxpayer money. But you end up with what kind of taxes? Property taxes, etc. State aid, unrestricted. And here's a listing of those items. Now you've got them as the different categories. You've got governmental activities up at the top, business type activities in total. And so everything's balancing. But the assets here are just a little bit different. And we end up with net assets at the beginning and net assets at the end. That's the same as the statement of changes in retained earnings. So there's an awful lot of similarities. A company puts revenue minus expenses. A school puts their expenses first because those are the things that they get to control. And there's really um, just a few things that end up showing up here. You end up with categories. You know, think about the expenses. This would be something a corporation would have everything together. And if there were restricted items, they would be listed separately. Schools don't have to do that, but they've got to account for things a little more carefully because they're, you know, if you get if you get a grant for something, that's how you have to spend your money. So you've got to make sure you've got your grants. You've got other things than when you're charging for services. Now the capital gains and contributions. What else comes in? And we'll, we're going to get into more specifics of these terms as we move through the course, because these items are very similar to the ones that we're dealing in financial accounting. So. The only thing that happens is the order looks different and the names of the accounts might be slightly different. But basically the financial statements you're dealing with for a school can be very comparable to the financial statements we're dealing in this class. So hopefully this information helps you compare what you're doing with your jobs and what we're doing in the class. If you've got any questions, let me know.